And the push to vaccinate more Americans continues. Today, Philadelphia health officials announced that health care workers, students, and staff of city colleges must be vaccinated by October 15th. Many essential businesses will also be required to enforce mask wearing. Now, when the first legal test of vaccine mandates, the nation's highest court upheld Indiana University's requirement that students receive a COVID-19 vaccine in order to attend in-person classes this fall. I'm joined now by BNC Chief Legal Correspondent Dr. Laura McNeil. Dr. Laura, are there any legal consequences for the school districts who have issued mask mandates in defiance of their governor's order? You know, thankfully for those school districts, currently there are no legal consequences uh, that I can see, but what there are are extreme financial consequences. We have heard Governor DeSantis be very clear and direct in saying that he will withhold board member salaries, superintendent salaries if those schools refuse to honor uh, his prohibition on mass mandates. Now, what could possibly happen, there is a lawsuit uh, that was recently filed about uh, a group of special education students, and they're saying, you know what, by not having a mass mandate, you're depriving us of the right to a proper education, access to a public education. And so uh, there's a lot of different angles that people are using to challenge uh, different aspects of this mass mandate. It'll be really interesting to see how the courts move forward. And what if you are a parent who attends uh, or has a child who attends a school that is not requiring masks? Do you have any legal rights to protect your child? Nayara, it's really hard to answer that question because these are cases of first impression. Our court system has never been positioned or propositioned with this particular legal issue. And so essentially there is a lawsuit of some special education students. One of the students said, you know what, I have Down syndrome, which increases the likelihood of me being at risk with COVID and having very severe outcomes. And therefore, by not having a mask mandate, you are putting my life at risk. And so it'll be interesting. Those are examples of legal challenges that parents say, you know what, my child has the right to go to school and the other kids need to wear masks and protect his right to go to school and not be put in a safety uh, position, meaning where his life might be potentially in danger. And so as far as legal rights, that's it. They can challenge it in terms of their child not being protected, or they can transfer their child to another school, a private school or another public school that is not, that does have a mass mandate. And what are the broader implications then of the Supreme Court's rejection of the uh, Indiana, ver the, the effort to stop Indiana University student, the, the mandate that they now face. The implications are very broad. For the highest court of the land to acknowledge that, you know what, I'm, she's not going to step in, meaning Amy Coney Barrett, and allow Indiana University to not have this vaccine mandate, she simply rejected their pleas for those students and said, you know what, we're gonna allow these vaccine mandates to go forth. So that rejection by the Supreme Court sends a message to all colleges and universities, essentially the green light to go ahead and have vaccine mandates. Why? Because we're in a public health crisis and that is what's for the greater good of society that is in the best interest of public health and dr laura what is your response to people who say mask mandates violate my constitutional rights nayara if i had a dollar for every time someone said mass mandates violate my constitutional rights the right that i have you know to liberty and what i want to do with my own body and my response always is there is absolutely nothing in the constitution that gives you a constitutional right to infect others. There is no right inherently in the Constitution. And so it's a falsehood. It's a misreading, a misinterpretation of the Constitution. It does not violate their First Amendment rights. And that's why you see court after court uphold these mass mandates. It does not violate their constitutional rights. And what I find fascinating about that, Dr. Laura, is the idea that the Constitution was designed to protect against government infringement. Uh, but these are, you know, sometimes independent school districts. Uh, these are, it does not protect, as you mentioned, uh, the idea that you can ignore public health. So um, on the balance of the rulings that we're seeing coming out of the court. Uh, there's also the eviction moratorium. What did, what did that indicate about how the idea of, you know, businesses, individual freedom, how that's playing out with this court? Yeah, so interestingly enough, today with the court, the federal court upholding the eviction moratorium, uh, sent a very strong message because essentially you had renters or land 
land owners, excuse me, landlords say, hey, this is a financial burden on us. We need you to lift this moratorium so that we can move forward. And the court said no. And so what we can expect, though, that's at the federal court level. This decision will be appealed all the way up to the Supreme Court. And Biden has been very clear in saying, you know what, I know it's an uphill battle if he gets to the Supreme Court again, because they said in a 5-4 decision just in June that unilateral decisions like that are not permissible. Essentially, they said Congress is the authority to create these eviction moratoriums, not the CDC, not President Biden. And so this is a temporary reprieve for those renters. But uh, unfortunately, what's looking down this, the head is not very good. Mm, and Dr. Laura, it does seem that between the school districts that are defying governor's orders, uh, between the CDC or the White House issuing a moratorium extension, there is some aspect of riding out the clock of legal responsibility here at this point. And thank you for breaking down all of that for us. Always a pleasure to have you. Thank you.